Today we're trying a mystery brewer from Brewista. Welcome, my name is Patrick Rolf and this is Coffee with April. For this episode, we're trying a new brewer, which we always like to do. It's always interesting to explore how we can brew our coffee better. And the brewer we chose today, it's a bit of a random one. We, we bought it a, a few months back uh, from Coffee Desk in Poland. Uh, it's a Brewvista brewer. It's obviously a fully immersion brewer. But basically today when we were trying to find some more info on it, we couldn't find it anywhere online uh, apart from one or two very old YouTube videos. So we don't really know if this is a product that Brovista is actually selling anymore, uh, but it doesn't matter because it's here. We have tried it and we have some opinions about it that we'd like to share with you guys. Now, first of all, if we just look at the kind of model of it and it's a, obviously an immersion brewer, which is interesting, right? It's similar to a cupping protocol or a French press where you basically have a total contact time uh, from start to finish with all of the water, all of the coffee, a bit depending on how you brew, but kind of a very basic way of brewing. What's interesting with this version of it in relationship to, for example, the Hario Switch um, and all of the other ones that are on the market as well is that this looks very similar to some kind of batch brew. It's basically a very, very big brew basket, which is actually interesting for a few different reasons. Now, however, when we take a closer look, we notice directly that the bottom of the brewer is very, very flat, which has a little, little tiny hole in the middle of it, which already now has me feeling that we're gonna have a very slow drawdown as soon as the water level goes down, right? But let's test it and let's see what comes out of it. Now, again, because of the bottom, the surface area is so wide, it's gonna actually allow us to make sure that all of that coffee gets saturated almost at the same time, which is a positive, right? So we're still interested in seeing what we can get out of it. Uh, I think we all can agree on the fact that they're not gonna win a design award anytime soon. It's a relatively big brewer. It's a big chunk of plastic. Um, I guess one of the positives is that it probably won't break. You can bring it where you wanna go. In terms of paper filters, we saw a few YouTube videos where people were using Kalita filters uh, or any kind of smaller flatbed filters, which doesn't feel like it makes much sense because we really wanna utilize that huge surface area at the bottom of the brewer. So we basically popped in a Mucka Master batch proof filter, and that seems to be working pretty well for us. Now, in terms of the coffee that we're using, uh, we're about to feature a new farm here at April, El Socorro, Guatemala. We have a beautiful honey processed Java varietal, and we're gonna dose that 20 grams of coffee to 300 grams of water. And we're grinding this coffee very coarse, as coarse as we can on the jitting standing behind me. In terms of Comandante, we're probably looking about 35 to 40 clicks. Now, because it's such a wide open brewer, what we wanna do is work with a water temperature that is quite high because we're gonna have a long steam time and it's so exposed. So probably the temperature will drop quite a lot. So we're up at 99 degrees Celsius. And I'm basically gonna chuck in all of the water at the same time, making sure that all of the coffee gets saturated when I'm pouring. And again, we're pouring up to 300 grams of water and you should be able to do that within the first 20 seconds, basically, of the brew. And when that is done, I'm just gonna let it steep. And we're gonna let this steep basically up to two minutes. And at two minutes, we're gonna give it just a little quick gentle stir to break that crust. And then we're gonna open up the valve completely. Now, as all of these kind of full immersion brews, usually what you can do is you can kind of change how much you wanna open that valve. Uh, this brewer seems quite difficult to do that with because you can't really control that very well. So we kind of chose to either have it completely closed or completely open, um, which actually I think makes much, much uh, bigger difference. And it makes a bit more sense when you brew with it as well. Um, you really wanna be able to control that water flow as much as you can, right? 
but we're gonna let this steep and once that's done we're gonna basically get back to you guys and give you some results in terms of what do we think in terms of taste and how did this brew actually end up so gentle stir Open. Now, one of the things I, I want to say is that the switch mechanism is actually super easy. Um, so I really like how that kind of feels because a lot of the other full immersion drippers are uh, basically having a switch that's a bit difficult to work with sometimes and you don't always know if it's close or not. And this is actually super easy to work with. Now, what we can see here as kind of predicted is that the initial drawdown is actually quite fast and that makes a lot of sense, but it comes down to basically the pressure in the filter. So whenever you brew coffee, the more amount of water you have in your filter on any given brewer, the faster the drawdown will be. And then usually what happens is that the drawdown will basically decrease in speed as the water level in the filter becomes less and less and less. Hence, the pressure of that water is then changing, right? Um, so what we're interested in seeing here is basically how consistent will this drawdown be throughout the brew and what is the kind of total brew time that we're looking at. And now we're basically at four minutes and we can still quite, we can see a quite considerable amount of water still in the filter. Uh, but the flow rate now has gone from basically a constant flow to now dripping. So as expected, what we're seeing here is that the very last part of the brew will take a very long time to go through. And that's kind of classic batch brew um, and also classic because what happens is that the angle of the bottom is just too flat, basically. Uh, so when you have that, if you don't have multiple holes, then you're basically going to end up with a very, very slow flow rate in the end of the brew. Now one solution can be to drill a bunch of holes in it, um, which we for example tend to do with some of the batch brewers for example, or make a larger hole in the bottom. Uh, but that's a video for another time. So we're at six minutes and we're basically going to kill the brew here because we still have some water in the filter and basically there's it's very rare that a coffee comes out tasty when your contact time is this long anyway, so it doesn't make much sense to actually wait. Now, one pitch here could be okay, but go coarser and it's gonna flow through faster. Only issue there is that we're already on the very coarsest setting, so there's not much to do in terms of making it coarser. So what we see is that basically all of these brews are gonna end up with a very, very slow end part of the brew. Again, similar to what a normal batch brew would kind of do, which is also why here at April we don't brew batch brew, because it's not very tasty. Um, now, we've been tasting this coffee. Uh, we've been doing some measurements. This specific brew ends up at more or less a perfect 1.3 TDS, which is actually often what we're going for here. So we're quite happy with that. And as a lot of full immersion brewers, it is easy to control. It is easy to get the kind of TDSs, strength and extractions that we're looking for. Um, however, the format of this, especially the prolonged kind of drawdown in the last part of the brew, it's just not making this brew very tasty. It ends up a little bit muddy. We don't have the clarity we want. We don't have the complexity we want. And for example, a Harrier switch or any more kind of drip version of a batch brew or of a full immersion brewer would probably be a lot better than what we're looking at here. That being said, it's fun to try. Um, and as we mentioned in the beginning of the video, we don't really have much info on this brewer and we can't find it anywhere online anymore. So if you guys have some experience with it, we would love to hear more. We're also gonna see what happens if we drill some holes in it. And we're gonna just continue to explore a bit more and all of that will be on Patreon exclusively. Uh, but again, if you have any thoughts on this, any experience with this brewer, any other kind of full immersion brewer you want us to try, then please let us know in the comments below. We're always really happy when you guys share. And with that, thank you for watching. We want to give a special thank you to all of our Patreon supporters. It's because of you that we are able to continue to make these videos. 
And we want you all to feel free to always come with suggestions and ideas on the content that you want to see uh, because we are doing this for you and because of you. Thank you from all of us here at April.